All right, so I have to make this quick because I'm only just leaving in time. Today is Saturday of the Anzac Day long weekend, and because Kate is working and I have no other plans on, I'm taking the time to head down to Robe. So Robe is known for its really rugged coast and limestone rocks, hence it being on the limestone coast. And I've never been there before, but I'm really excited. Unlike uh, a couple of weeks ago when I went to Broken Hill, uh, I wasn't expecting too much from there, but I'm expecting a bit more from Robe. I've seen a lot of photos in all sorts of conditions, and so with the good weather we're having, I'm hoping that I'm going to get some really nice photographs. But with that said, I think I really need to get going. I think I'm going to make it there with only about a half hour to go until sunset. So let's hurry up. So it's four hours later. I've made it to Robe. I'm a bit tired, but I have gotten here in time for sunset. I've got about a half hour to go. And so I've picked the Robe Obelisk. It's a bit of a tourist attraction. If you look up photos of Robe, you're guaranteed to see a photo of this. Um, like I said, I've never been here. I've never seen this before. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna have a bit of a look around and hopefully find some nice spots for some photos. So the reason I picked the Robe Obelisk as the location to come to was because I know that it's a destination, people come to take photos, because it's all you see. And I didn't have time to, you know, hope that I'd find something cool. Unfortunately though, a lot of it is fenced off and you can't get to it. And they've put two fences right in front of the obelisk and you'd have to hop one to get up on the other so you could get a nice shot at it. Um, but it's all because of the cliffs eroding. So that's a little disappointing. I might send my drone up uh, before, before it gets too late, although it is quite windy, so it'll be interesting to see how it handles that. But I'm just having a bit of a walk around. Not long till the sun's gone now, but Oh, it's all beautiful. The rocks, the cliffs, the vegetation, the sky, even the salt spray just above the water from the waves hitting the rock. It looks great. But, saying that, I'm not sure what photos I can really get here, given I don't really want to jump any fences. It's nice though. Right now the clouds are getting a little pink. It looks like the sun has ducked completely behind the clouds and won't be back out. There's not many people around and so it is officially time to put the drone up. I think I got some nice shots. Now I've got to solve the issue of where I'm going to sleep tonight because I was thinking about possibly sleeping in the car like I have previously. There are all these signs. There's one over there on the signboard. It says something like no camping on council land, no sleeping in your car, like specifically. So I don't know. I There's a few campgrounds in town that I could check out, although I think the cheapest for an unpowered site was about $35 on the websites. So I gotta work that out and then I gotta figure out something for dinner because I'm a bit hungry. Lots of stuff to do. All right, I got it sorted out. Um, I'm paying for a campsite tonight, $36, and I've got myself a nice grassy unpowered site. So at least I'm definitely gonna get a good sleep tonight and I'm gonna get a shower too. I don't know about tomorrow night. I just feel like so stubborn. I don't want to pay to sleep in my, like, I plan to sleep in my car. I don't know why Robe can't just let me do that unimpeded. So I might 
figure out something else to do tomorrow night. Maybe I will fill up to driving a half hour back to Kingston or something. But for now, I'm going to set up the tent and then it is definitely dinner time because I am pretty hungry. So I'm feeling a little bit tired, but I've made it out here. I don't know how much of a sunrise we're going to get. Uh, the skies above us are completely clear, but there's clouds all around the horizon, especially over where the sun will rise from. I noticed a few gaps, but as to whether or not the sun ends up, you know, timing it right and popping through those clouds, we'll see. I've pulled up just a little south of the obelisk and uh, over this direction there's Glass Beach, I think, and then off this way towards the obelisk is a coastal walk. And it's also a bit blustery, so I hope I don't get too cold. Anyway, it's time to get out of the car and start looking. It's actually not too cold out here. It's just a bit windy. It, the wind itself is okay. I was just a bit worried about the weather. I mean, for myself and for the photography. Because last night it, it rained a couple times. Which also kept me up. Because rain is not quiet when you're in a tent. Okay, I changed my mind. It's a bit cold. So I had a bit of a walk along the path. Sort of joins up to where I was last night at a point. You know, I had a bit of an explore further down this way. So it isn't that far to the obelisk. But unfortunately for me, there's a lot of signs saying keep off the vegetation, stay on the tracks. Um, which is fair. I want to respect that because it does seem like a lot of areas have been sort of damaged by people going out there. The only issue is, it's keeping me away from that. I don't have long until sunrise, though I did see over the hill, the clouds are over the horizon, so I don't think we're gonna get any sun falling on us just yet. So I haven't been able to find a way down that would make me feel good about passing the signs. So I think I'm gonna head back up towards the obelisk. There are a few views across the water looking towards it that I think I might be able to get with the telephoto lens or something like that. The clouds are getting light on them and hopefully I find at least one shot before too long. So I've just gotten a few of pretty much the same shot just in slightly different locations. Uh, just set to 35mm because that's as long as this lens goes. Just doing portrait orientated shots just trying to get a little out of focus uh, bushes in the foreground so it's like at f2.8 just so I can keep as much out of focus as possible and just keeping the obelisk in the background in the center I think they're nice shots not the dramatic landscape that I was looking for I'm gonna try just a couple other areas I'm heading up over the hill close to the obelisk maybe I'll see something well, I didn't think there was anything much more interesting over the hill. So now I am going back to the car and it's definitely time for the drive. So I got a lot more photos rather than videos just then. Um, I really like the photos, well I think I'll like the photos when I get them on the computer, but it still feels like a bit of a letdown to have to turn to the drone to take photos rather than just my camera. So right now I'm going to have some breakfast and then I'm going to head further south down the coast. So hopefully I can find some more spots for photography that are just as beautiful but less restricted. And then after that, I'm probably just gonna go sit in a cafe all day. I'm back at camp now, and I was worried because I thought I had forgotten a spoon to eat my porridge with, which I did, but I also forgot to bring the oats for the porridge. 
So breakfast is just going to be a banana and coffee. I don't know how I missed that one. Had a little coffee, I extended my stay, and now I've come out to have a little bit of an explore. Just looking at Google Maps, I figure I'll probably head no further than about a half hour south. First stop is Goat Island. I could see it from where I was this morning and from the obelisk. It turns out you need a four wheel drive to keep going to get to the coast so you can see out to actually see the island. So that's fun, I actually get to use the four wheel drive. This four-wheel drive track may lead further south, but it is a four-wheel drive track. It goes along the beach, but where I'm getting, I want to be a little faster than that. So I'm going to head back to the road and get on the actual road. So I've had to stop because I came down this hill behind me and that was fine. It was a bit bumpy, but coming up I've had some issues. So, well, issues being the car wouldn't go up. But that's why we have the air compressor. So I can use the gauge on there to let my tires down 10 or 15 PSI. And then once I get back up and over to the main road, pump them up again. That sounds very simple, but we'll see how that works out. All right, those should all be sitting at about 16, 17 PSI right now. It's, uh, it's usually meant to be about 26. Let's give this another crack. Yes, that was the difficult bit there. Struggled just a little. I did realize that also the tires probably only have a few more months left on them. You know, not the most amount of uh, traction. Okay, made it out just fine, back at the road. So it is time to fill the tires back up and continue this whole little excursion which is taking a bit longer than I expected it to. So I had a bit of a look on Google Maps. It turns out there's not much along the coast until you get again like a full half hour down that isn't only accessible by four-wheel drive tracks so I'm back at it again they do seem to get narrower and bumpier the further you go down them but this one says I got another 13 minutes until I'm at the coast I will deflate and inflate my tires as much as it requires but I would really like to find a place for sunset. So I made it out here without having to deflate the tyres. Um, heading back though, I'll see. There's a few areas I'm not too sure about. It's, it's beautiful. I love the rocks out in the water. I think they look great. I'm just gonna go for a little walk because I reckon things might be nice just over that way. <laughs> so I can definitely see the possibilities of a shot like this. I'll, I'll do some research you know, once I get back to town, but I'm just wondering if it's worth the drive. Very well maybe, and there are a few other spots I could get to that would require similar drives, but I guess we'll just see what I'm up to. I've also got sunrise tomorrow, so that's another thing I have to think about. I really thought I'd be sitting in a cafe drinking a mocha right now. 
back to the car now, back up the track, and then back to town. And, uh, and I'll just take some time to chill out. beautiful so the light on top of the rocks that are just submerged look look Fine. We're back. Uh, <laughs> Woo! It was at 20% battery, so I just took I took some photos, said return to home, and then started talking to you. And I was just sitting here thinking, I should hear it, shouldn't I? I look behind me, and I can see it over the water trying to land, and it's like tap to cancel landing. <laughs> So I got it just in time because I think if you take off too quickly after you start the drone up it sets its home point as somewhere randomly up in the sky where it's just been like you need to let it sit on the ground for 30 seconds or so so it can say this is the home point right here so it it thought it was landing in the right spot out over there somewhere. <laughs> It was still up in the sky. It wasn't that low, but... Woo! Need to be a little more careful. Uh, what was I saying? The light over the water, over the low-laying rocks, looked great. And I thought, well, if I can't see it from there, the only vantage point is up higher. So I sent the drone up. And I think the photos are nice. I, I think they're quite nice, again. The drone's got it for robe. I just hope it's not more of the same, you know, too much of the same. But, yeah, I, I sent it back out to the obelisk. I got some videos, which I think it'll be nice as reels on Instagram. And then I almost lost the drone. I'm gonna chuck the drone away for now. I've got one battery left that's fully charged and I'm going to save that tomorrow because there was a few things I saw on the drive up here. I think like it's still, it's got, if you see back here, it still looks nice and moody. I'm enjoying blue hour right now so I might go for a walk again with the camera this time and maybe get some shots. I'll do that, we'll see what happens. Moon's up, looks very cool. Oh yeah, that's what I was... I like Rome. I think it's a beautiful town. I think the location is beautiful, but it's just not great for photography because you gotta hop over fences or send out a drone. It feels like you have to do illegal things to get the shot, and I don't really like that. Still, it's a beautiful place. So as you can probably tell, I'm packing up. I'm heading out. Um, I set my alarm for 5.30 this morning and I woke up and I undid the zips and looked out and it was just flat and grey. You know, not even definition to the clouds. So I waited a little, 
I checked every now and then, but it just went from dark gray to this very, very light gray. So there was no sunrise. I guess I could have gotten up and gone out to take photos, but to be honest, I, I was struggling with the nice clouds and the nice light as it was. And I just didn't really see a point in getting out on such a drab, boring morning. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> so instead, I just sat in bed for a little bit, took my time getting up. And now I'm all packed and about to head off. If you want to see some of the best photos from this trip, wait around until the end of the video. And if you want to see even more, head to my Instagram, which will be linked in the description below. And I guess I will see you later.